so committed to. Now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sitting in my kitchen talking to Frida. Hey, just your small town whale. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honored, sweetheart. Hello, everyone. I'm Frida Wales, and for the premiere of season two of In the Tank, I'm truly honored and thrilled to be joined by the incomparable and frequently bothered Coco Peru, queen of the stage and comedy, film and TV star. Her website bio gives a brief overview of the astounding 30-year career she has had in drag, while also informing us that she is available for children's parties. I also do children's parties. She told Hecklina once that she prefers to swim nude, but today she's diving to the tank fully clothed. I'd like to welcome Coco Peru. Hello, darling. Can we all just acknowledge my lighting is terrible, okay? I, <laughs> Frida, I know it's terrible. And as long as I can own it, we're okay. Okay. You know what? On. I'm not bothered. <laughs> you're not bothered. Okay, good. As long as you're not bothered, you're the host. Perfect. <laughs> I will say what you are. Yes. Persistent. I am persistent. I think I asked you about <laughs> six or seven times. Yes. <laughs> To be honest, that's not even my record either. <laughs> as soon as you give me a little inkling of a maybe yes, I will keep asking until it happens. <laughs> you know, I'm so um, willing to do uh, things for other people, especially younger people, because I want to support younger artists. It's just the getting into the drag. Totally. <laughs> it's, you know, as you get older, it's more of a chore. And so um, I never know when I'm going to be doing it. And so it's hard to schedule. That's truly what that was about. Oh, totally, yeah, I totally get it. And that's why I always try and be like, hey, are you in drag like anytime soon? And I'll, I'll get in drag for you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. And our first question uh, is, what is the origin of your drag name? Why are you Coco Peru? I was dating a Peruvian guy at the time in the 80s. And I went to Peru and I met a very cute boy named Coco in a gay bar. And this was a gay bar you had to knock on the door, you oh, know, okay. and they'd open the thing to make sure and then they let you in. And then maybe an hour or so later, they introduced Coco and out came this glamorous showgirl. And I realized that was the same boy that I met earlier. And then I learned that he was very famous in Peru. His, her name is Coco Matusiz, Matusuz. I'm not saying it correctly, but She's well known in Peru. And at that time in the late eighties, she was um, on television all the time and on talk shows and really celebrated and people loved her. And I thought it was really fascinating that in a country that was so Catholic and homophobic, we had a knock on this little door to get into the secret gay bar that had no windows. Um, a drag queen who was a hundred percent being herself was celebrated. And it got me thinking there's power in being authentic and 100% owning everything you've been taught to hate about yourself. And so when I came back to New York, the Peruvian and I broke up, we're still friends. And then that with the AIDS activism I was witnessing at that time and queer liberation at that time mixed in with that, and then I saw Charles Bush do a play called A Lady in Question. And I realized, oh, drag can be theatrical. Mm -hmm. And because I had trained in theater in college. And then the last bit was I read a book about Native American two spirits. And for the first time in my life, I felt like I read a history of what, how I was born, that I was both. I had female and male energy all mixed in one. And I, always felt badly because I wasn't a girl and I wanted to be a girl, but I also enjoyed being a boy. And so I was always very torn. And when I read about two spirited people, I realized, oh, I can be both. And so I just one day said, I'm gonna be a drag queen. I'm gonna be a, a, a modern day two spirit. And I know nowadays um, it's, possibly perceived as being disrespectful to latch onto someone else, you know, a Native American cultural thing, but um, I do it with total respect. And when I spoke about it in my shows, I honored the Native American um, history from which it came. 
And it really was very healing to me. And so I can't deny that experience. To me, drag was a calling in much the same way people talk about, you know, when they have a calling to be a whatever, mm -hmm. priest or a nun or a religious whatever. I, I felt like that's what drag was for me. Yeah, um, my personal journey actually was a, almost kind of the opposite. I started drag and then I slowly became to realize that I actually am kind of non-binary. I'm kind of gender fluid and gender always kind of, I never really liked being picked in one category kind of thing. So I really respect that a lot. And actually that was kind of the first way I kind of described it as well. I was like, I was like, well, the two spirited way is like definitely what I kind of feel most represents me, but now we have non-binary. So that's kind of nice as well. Right. And so back in, when I started discovering myself, those, those words didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't internet to <laughs> even explore other people like you. Definitely. Yeah. It was only um, whatever you got shown and whatever you could buy in the store. That right? book was, you know, uh, an anchor for me and it really, truly an anchor in that for the first time in my life, I felt I like came down into my body and I felt like my feet were rooted in something rich and historical and that I was connected to it. And suddenly I had a vision of what I was going to do. And it was, I had no doubt in my mind that I was going to be successful at my first show. And I mean, I had doubts and fears, but my vision was much greater than my doubts and fears. So I always encourage young people nowadays to always, whatever you do in life, make sure the vision is greater than the doubts and fears that no, will usually crop up. And that actually goes really well into our next question. Do you have a memory that you could share from your first performances in drag? Oh, I was so bad, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing something that people hadn't seen before. Um, and that was, I was dressed as a woman, but not pretending to be a woman, doing autobiographical monologues, singing songs, being political, talking about AIDS, because I really believed that storytelling was the key to not only my own liberation, but into connecting with other people, where they realize that my story is their story, and that all of this drag isn't really what it's about. What it's about is that you can, regardless of what I'm wearing, you're gonna relate to everything I'm talking about. Yeah, the drag's kind of just the you people might, get your yeah, attention. <laughs> exactly. You might think that I'm a completely kind of different other than you because I identify as two-spirited or because I am wearing women's clothes or I'm queer or whatever, you know, but you're going to relate to everything I say. So the that was a one of my main goals. But at one of the earliest memories, and it was probably my, it was my first show, was my parents sitting right in the front. And I was so nervous. And they had seen me in drag uh, before when I um, showed them pictures and whatnot as because I had to do like publicity photos because I had never done drag before. I, I booked my show and then had three months to write it. And wow. that was the first time I saw myself in drag. But um, my parents came to my first show and they were so proud and they were there to protect me because they thought people were going to get up and throw tomatoes, actual tomatoes at me for being openly gay. And so when you say a show, like was you got to produce like an actual show or was I it did my own show and a cabaret show, which yeah. was monologues and song. It was called My Goddamn Cabaret. <laughs> it was probably about an hour and 10 minutes. And um, yeah, it was that show was what put me on the map in New York City. And then you've already kind of touched on it as well, that you're very supportive of young artists and even encourage others to start drag. Is that something that you've always been passionate about? I'm not, it's not necessarily drag. I'm passionate about people being self-expressed. So however that expresses itself is what, you know, turns me on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not so much into labels. So um, it's like whatever turns you on is great. I have to be very careful because being an older person, um, I, I was talking about it with Peaches Christ the other day. I said, do you remember that time we were backstage and I don't know if it was Washington one. She said, oh girls, can you help me? And there were two girls presenting as, or two people mm 
mm -hmm. presenting as girls. They had girl names and they were insulted that she had called them girl. You know, so I, I sometimes get myself in trouble with still trying to figure out the, the new lingo. Well, know? and even like, especially for like my generation of gays, we called everyone girl. It was like, girl this, girl, 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 right? So now it's like- no, oh, That's what Peaches, Peaches said, oh, I call everybody girl. Everyone girl. It's our gender neutral drag term. Right. <laughs> that actually kind of leads right into our next question as well, is you have an excellent working relationship with drag icon personas such as Peaches Christ and Jackie Beat, who I've also had the pleasure of interviewing and chatting with. Uh, they were a lot easier to get a hold of. <laughs> Uh, can you give us some insight? That's because Jackie B dresses in drag like literally every day. <laughs> right? She was like, you've got this day at this time, this day at this time, this day. You can pick any of those. Exactly. Things. Exactly. Um, do you, can you give us a little insight of how you all kind of got connected and, and how your friendships have grown? Peaches, I met because she was doing a play here with, it was the uh, Grey Gardens show with Jinx Monsoon. And afterwards I went up to her and I, I, we had met before, but I had said, um, if you ever want to put me in a show, I would love to work with you. And she said, really? I'm going to hold you to that. And she called me that week. And I then, that led to Witches of um, Eastwick. And then I did the Steel Magnolia show with her, which was drag, uh, Steel Dragnolias. And um, I love working. I love working with other drag queens. And Jackie B, we sort of worked together through the years. I was always a little bit like... I didn't know how to interact with her. But as when I moved out of here, I was like, well, I live near Jackie now. We're both drag queens. We're gonna be crossing paths. I have to get to know this queen. And so I sort of just forced myself on her. We're just I friends. Made like, I made her like me. <laughs> You've been staying quite busy throughout COVID just like me. Uh, what is some of the most exciting new endeavors that you've been able to get into? I actually haven't been all that busy because um, like I said, the, I, I had the surgery on my shoulder. I've been having problems with my feet. And, you know, it's just, my mom always said, it's not fun, you know, getting old. And so I've been dealing with that stuff and, and I've just gotten lazier. And so the, um, when I would be booked and to do shows, you, you have to deliver, mm -hmm. you know? And so that goes right back to my first show ever. I booked my show before I even had it written. So I've always given myself deadlines. And so the things where I have deadlines now are my Casa Coco shows, but they're okay. usually once every month yeah, to right. every month and a half. I've been doing phone calls where I chat with fans. I do my cameos mm -hmm. and then, um, but I'll do cameos maybe once a month when I have to make the videos to yeah. announce Casa Coco. <laughs> That's how I try to work it out. Yeah. <laughs> and then I've been doing a Netflix show. Yes. <laughs> called Dead Endia. And I have a play a character on that. I'm not, I'm not on every episode, but it's been, that's been wonderful. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got into the role of recording that show? I went and auditioned for it. And I went in and I just, um, I liked what I read of the character. Yeah, it looks like an awesome show. And so I just had fun with it. And I s decided that um, I was gonna do some improv mm -hmm. which is kind of a no-no, but I just felt like I just went with it. Yeah. And so anyway, um, then they had me come back in for the callback and I, and I got it and um, th I was thrilled. Being a passionate activist, have you found any opportunities to continue your activism during the, the pandemic? Well, when I do the Casa Cocos, each Casa Coco, um, with the earnings that I make from doing the show, because it's all pay what you can. So on those shows, um, yes, I donate uh, some of the money to different causes. Okay, and it's just d rotating causes that you believe in? Just, if, if it relates to a certain guest, um, or like one time I did a monologue that had to do with littering in the oceans. So I donated to um, a foundation called Surfrider and they clean and protect the oceans, uh, especially specifically the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. And um, I've donated to the nurses because of the pandemic. So um, I don't, during Black Lives Matter, I was donating to um, several 
uh, organizations that address issues within the black community. So little, little things like that. As yeah. a whale, among all whales, I wanna thank you for the ocean one for sure. <laughs> it's a big, big thing for me. I am insane about littering and the ocean. Right, keep the plastic in the drag queens, not the ocean. Yep. Amen. Uh, in an interview, you said the cult classic Girls Will Be Girls will be coming out soon on a digital platform. Do you think that will give a little nudge to completing a sequel? Oh, Lord. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. Whenever I try to talk to Richard Day about the sequel, who he wrote and directed the first one and the second one, you know, we always, you know, Girls Will Be Girls is snarky and mean for a reason because he wrote it. And so you never get a serious answer from him. <laughs> and so I really have no updates, but Jack Plotnick who plays Evie did say that he hopes to have it finished in 2021. Awesome. Which is what, like 12 years too late. <laughs> and once again, you've uh, predicted the next question. Is there anything else in 2021 you're looking forward to? <laughs> the vaccine. Yes. <laughs> and so this brings us to our last question of the interview. I would love it if you could give me your best whale call. Frida. <laughs> <laughs> you that want me to go it. first? That was it. Oh, that was my Frida. That was <laughs> that whale call. <laughs> that was, this is my whale call. Frida. Frida. <laughs> Jackie, Jackie uh, called Lady Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> That's an insult to whales. Right? <laughs> we don't have all that hair. <laughs> no, all um, those oxens. Although the barnacles, that's kind of whale-like. <laughs> oh yeah, no, bunions, she, she has bunions, not barnacles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I will say this though, when I lived in New York City, um, so I grew up Catholic and of course, you know, was done with religion, but, uh, I was invited to St. John the Divine in New York City, which is a beautiful Episcopal cathedral. And I was there for the blessing of the animals. And it's a big event. And so we go in and there's every religion is represented on the altar. Like it was a Native American, there's Jewish, everything, right? And then all of a sudden the doors in the back of the cathedral opened and there's this swelling, beautiful music playing and in walked an elephant down the aisle. And then all these different animals being honored, right down to the smallest, which was the bowl of algae. And then I, so I'm already kind of crying. People have their dogs and I'm, you know, I'm just an emotional wreck. But then they started oh, through the music pipe, you know, I guess it was in the soundtrack. Yeah. But anyway, whale calls and I lost it. I just thought it was so beautiful. We do sound so pretty there good. Is, there is something quite haunting about a whale call. So why don't you do your best whale call and give me lessons so okay. that okay. next time I'm asked to do a whale call, I can deliver. I'll give you a little language lesson. You start out with like a nice grunty, like moany, like ooh. Something like that. That, does, that is basically bunny, I have right? to say. <laughs> In a restaurant her, her with a plate of food in front of her, food in front of her. <laughs> when she's all full. <laughs> no, basically when you call Bunny, that's what she does over the phone. She just eats <laughs> animal noises. Um, so, ooh, no, I'm not doing it right. I thought they were more like, <laughs> like that kind of stuff. Could, smaller ones could be like a little nice beluga. Oh. Okay, well, I'm a small beluga, thank you. I'm like a nice big blue whale. <laughs> yeah, you are. Coco Peru, where can people find you online? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> What's that? I was trying to be my best car salesman. <laughs> that was totally car salesman. I felt <laughs> impelled to answer you like, well, um, <laughs> of course you can blush. find me. You can find me at cocoperu.com and I'm available on, I'm on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. And I'll be doing my Casa Coco shows. And the next one is, I don't know when you're airing this, but it's February 25th. And my two guest stars are um, Peppermint and Representative Brian Sims. 
wow. which you may not know who he is, but he's a politician here in this, an openly gay politician from the state of Pennsylvania. A big deal in the States. And he happens to be very cute. <laughs> <laughs> so casacoco.live for tickets. All of the Casa Cocos um, from the past are um, available on demand also at casacoco.live. Awesome. So you can check those out anytime and we'll have all the details in the description below and make sure to watch out Dead Endia when it comes out on Netflix later this year. Thank you so much for joining us today, Coco Peru. Thank you very much. Make sure to like and subscribe.